Good morning, folks. We've got news all over the place today, but perhaps none bigger than the awakening of the sun. We've got weather, climate, space, a special video from last night, and we're starting at spaceweathernews.com. We're finding the last day on the sun was much more interesting than before. Hard to really even focus on the earth-facing coronal holes with the brightness at the incoming limb. We are already seeing the X-ray flux begin to show the emission of the umbral field loops incoming on the north could have B-class flares by tonight. Meanwhile, the solar wind speed in purple, holding in very weak range and minor fluctuations in a weak stream, are leaving the magnetic field pretty quiet this morning. Folks, yesterday morning we reported the big quake in Nevada, and it has been aftershock heaven there, a shaking bonanza for pretty much the last 24 hours. Up next, folks, this storm is still roaring this morning and will do so through tonight, but just watch the action and amazing cloud forms as the wave coming from the Atlantic hits the one crossing Texas and lights it up for the overnight hours. Let's take another look at this. The form was easily visible from space and it also had some right fast cadence rippling coming out of the cores of the storms. Everywhere lightning was concentrated and persistent, the Schumann tweaking ripples can be seen. In the April Global Climate Report, we can see the above and below average temperature regions. If you take away that Siberian hotspot where the North Pole is heading, it's a relatively average month. And so let's look ahead to the rest of the year with the El Nino and La Nina forecast. Cooler waters are taking over the Central Pacific and forecasters are beginning to see the higher and higher chances of the ENSO negative phase this winter. This is precisely what is expected given the forcing lag of sunspot minimum on ENSO should be favoring La Nina and neutral conditions. Let's go to space next and find a close tiny binary. Apparently the system is only 55 light years away and what makes it special is that they really do almost match each other. In fact, this is a substellar binary, otherwise these orbiters look like Jupiter with one 9 times its size and the other 11 times. And up next, how about we come back to stellar pulsations for the second time this week. It was an interesting observational run here where the star just dropped its brightness for days and then surged to brightness for a month. Very good thing our sun doesn't do that, at least not with any regularity. Last but not least, folks, get this. They say that they can now look back and tell that modern sea level changes are humans' fault based on carbon dioxide releases. But how that came out of a study of the unexpected is quite the twist, because the core of their study was discovering how little they really understand about the past, especially when multi-million year ice-free periods occurred with similar carbon in the atmosphere to now, and how full-on glaciations were taking place during periods with much more carbon than now. Nevertheless, despite the fact that their model got it wrong throughout history, we are expected to believe it works now. One of the top 10 climate studies of the last year made mention of something similar, modern models not making sense in a larger, longer context of time. And if you didn't see our video from last night, I guarantee every single observer who ever gets into a climate discussion needs the weapons in that video, preferably all 10 of them. Check it out. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now it's 4.55 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.